Hello friends, we are back with our the fourth module of our MOOCs course on the topic of fundamentals of nuclear power generation. We already had three lectures on the topic of chain reaction in reactors and today we are going to finish up this particular module by uh, getting some more mathematical analysis about the neutron distribution inside the core and uh, then some idea about how to design a reactor. Just as a brief recap, I would like to go back primarily to the third lecture. Here we are discussing uh, or we started discussing in this module about the chain reactions where you are introduced to the topic of neutron life cycle and multiplication factor. And uh, so now you have clear idea what is the requirement of having a chain reaction and accordingly how can we control this multiplication factor by controlling several of its components so that we can ensure a critical reactor. Critical means where for every fission reactions only one of the product nucleus is allowed to participate in a subsequent fission. Uh, in the previous uh, lecture that is in the third lecture we have discussed in detail about the neutron diffusion theory where uh, this particular diffusion equation were developed I think it was in the second lecture only where we developed this particular equation which uh, basically uh, states the balance of neutron inside the reactor or in a particular location. So, right hand side here. Uh, represent the rate of change of neutron density with this uh, small v being the velocity of the neutron. And on the left hand side we have three terms where this first term is the uh, diffusion of neutron which is also related to the leakage of neutrons. And we generally get this form by rating the current density of neutron with the gradient via the Fick's law of diffusion. Then we have the rate of absorption and finally, some source term where source can be of two types it can be an external source of neutron or it can be neutron production because of the fission commonly thermal fission. In the last lecture we focused on uh, this particular equation or I should say the steady state version of this equation because our discussion was uh, limited mostly to the critical reactors. The reactor critical means the neutron density is constant and it is producing a constant amount of power. So, the right hand side uh, goes to 0 for a critical reactor. And then uh, we solved this particular equation under steady state for three different kind of geometries. We took three ideal configuration. The first one is that of an infinite plate, which is having infinite uh, dimensions in uh, two coordinate directions and almost 0 in the third coordinate direction or you can think this one to be a, a plate with infinite area, but uh, near 0 thickness. And uh, this is a source of neutron which is immersed into an infinite extent of uh, medium where there is no fission nuclei present. So, the only mechanism the neutron can have uh, are the diffusion and absorptions. And accordingly we got this particular distribution of uh, neutron here is double prime represents the neutron uh, the neutron emitted by the source per unit area d is the diffusion coefficient and l is the diffusion length. Uh, if you remember L square was related to d and sigma a. Then we went to the second condition where we had a point source of neutron. This being point source it is capable of uh, emitting neutrons in all possible directions over a sphere. So, we use the spherical coordinate system and got this particular distribution of neutron flask. Uh, here s represents the source strength that is number of neutrons emitted per unit time by this point source. And the final configuration was again of a, a line which is infinite in terms of its length and uh, so it can emit radiation in all possible directions like a cylinder and uh, using cylindrical coordinate system accordingly we go, got this expression where S prime represents the source strength per unit length of the source and K naught comes from the vessel functions or it is the modified vessel function of second kind. So, uh, for all these three distribution one thing is common that at the which is quite logical as well uh, near the source the strength of neutron flux is the highest and as we are moving away from this that exponentially decreases. But uh, all these three conditions all being ideal geometries that was done in non multiplying media. That means, the neutron source was assumed to be immersed into a media where there was uh, no source of neutron present or no fission going on only mechanism is the diffusion or only mechanisms are the diffusion and absorption and uh, 
presence of source was recognized only uh, very close to its uh, close to the center of the coordinate system or physically where it is located which provides one of the boundary conditions in calculating these expressions. But practically in a reactor we can have uh, different kinds of uh, multiplying media present or I should say uh, it is uh, not only non multiplying media rather fuel itself also will be present. So, that the neutrons can uh, participate in fission reaction and accordingly produce some new neutrons. So, we can have additional source of neutrons anywhere in the reactor which uh, accordingly we uh, discussed about the neutron diffusion in multiplying medium and we got this expression where we have only one additional term. This is only for a critical reactor. So, we are taking 0 on the right hand side and we are having this additional term here which represents the generation of neutron because fission. Here nu is the number of neutrons average number of neutrons produced for fission, sigma f is the macroscopic fission cross section and phi of course, is the distribution of uh, neutron and or neutron flux distribution. Now, before and finally, we have discussed about this concept of extrapolated length. Of course, we solve this diffusion in multiplying media for uh, one con consideration of infinite slab and uh, the condition of extrapolated length was consider mentioned. Uh, while we are considering the neutron flux to go to 0 at the edge of the edge of the geometry, practical cases generally does not become 0 there rather it can uh, continue to proceed in the downstream medium. So, by considering extrapolated length refers to if the medium is allowed to continue then where the neutron flux uh, approaches 0. So, for most of the cases extrapolated length can be quite small, but when that is a significant portion then we must add like uh, if we talk about say if we talk about any particular of these reactions always uh, which we shall be discussing uh, shortly also, where this extrapolated length should uh, provide some kind of correction to the physical length scale to consider. But one point I would like to mention before I move any further, uh, why we are having so much discussion about this neutron flask. Just think about how can you calculate the amount of energy produced in a reactor because of fission. Of course, uh, if uh, E represents the amount of energy released from a single fission reaction, then total amount of energy produced in a reactor should be equal to this E multiplied by the number of interactions. Now, how can we get the number of interactions? Number of interactions as per the definition has to be equal to the macroscopic fission cross section into the phi. Uh, so, this should be the number of interaction happening per unit volume because phi represents the neutron flask or it is the number of neutrons per unit area and sigma f is the macroscopic cross section. So, these two together has a dimension of per unit volume and now we need to multiply this one with the volume of the reactor itself or we may integrate this one over the entire volume of the reactor. So, that should give you the power produced by the reactor or amount of energy released by the reactor. Now, look at this expression here this uh, the first term that this E, this E is the amount of energy released from a single fission reaction. Do you remember how to calculate this? We have discussed this one in the second module itself. Once we know the details of the reaction, then we can always calculate this E very easily because uh, we just need to know the atomic mass of the parent nucleus and also the mass of the, the fission products and then we can calculate a mass balance to identify the value of mass defect and we know that 1 AMU of mass defect is equivalent to 931 MeV of energy. So, accordingly the mass defect is directly going to give you the value of this E that is the amount of energy released or amount of mass got that got converted to energy uh, through the fission reaction. For uranium or plutonium fission, this E is uh, commonly around 200 MeV or maybe just slightly higher, like quite often uh, a value of 212 MeV is considered. Next, the next term is this after we are uh, able to calculate the value of E, next term was sigma f. Now, sigma f is something that is uh, quite standard, means sigma f as per the definition, capital sigma or sigma f is equal to the neutron nuclear density into um, sorry I should write correctly the nuclear density into I am repeatedly writing wrong thing sorry. So, it can be as uh, the nuclear density multiplied by the microscopic cross section 
Now, for uh, most of the materials which are used in a common nuclear reactor, the value of this uh, new microscopic cross section, microscopic friction cross section or any other microscopic cross section is quite standard. So, we can calculate the value of this macroscopic cross section quite easily once we have idea about this nuclear density. Uh, if you think about any reactor later on in one of the later modules we shall be discussing in details, but commonly reactors can be of two types one is homogeneous other is heterogeneous. In a homogeneous reactor we generally find a homogeneous mixture of whatever component that we would like to put. Just you can think about one of the numerical problems we solved in the previous module. Uh, say your fuel is something like a compound of uranium like uranium sulphate or uranium carbonate kind of thing which is uh, dissolved into water and we put this mixture into inside the reactor. Now, the uranium 235 that can be present inside the compound acts as the fuel other components remains as it is and the water uh, that act as the moderator. So, uh, everywhere as there is a homogeneous composition the value of this cross sections also remain the same and in that kind of situations we know how to calculate the cross section like there the macroscopic cross section or say the average microscopic cross section for the entire mixture will be the uh, not microscopic I should say the average macroscopic cross section for this should be equal to the uh, n sigma f product for all divided by total n or I should say the n sigma f product you have to calculate for all components and then sum them up to get the numerator and then divide by the total number of nuclei that is present inside the reactor at that instant of time. Now, once we have calculated uh, this uh, E n sigma f then we are left with only phi. So, the calculation procedure of both E and sigma f are quite standard and in that case the entire evaluation of this power that reduces to this phi only. And depending upon the distribution of phi we can have different values of this p in different parts of the reactor and uh, hence uh, it is of utmost importance to get a perfect idea about the uh, distribution of this neutron flask. So, now we go back to the problem that we have solved during the previous uh, lecture only. Here geometry is of an infinite slab or re reactor is of the geometry of an infinite slab which is having a thickness of uh, A and the coordinate direction was taken to the uh, center line. So, we solve this and we got this particular form where A naught is the coefficient uh, uh, and uh, which can be calculated from the power rating for this. Here one thing I should mention while P dot I am using here this one I am talking about this P dot refers uh, as power because this is the common symbol that is used, but actually it is more like an energy flask because this P dot has an SI unit of energy released per unit area of the reactor watt or kilowatt whatever. So, this uh, while the symbol P dot it represents uh, or it looks like energy or power I should say, but actually it is energy released per unit area of the slab. So, we can have already done this calculation and here the buckling parameter that can be calculated as this pi by a whole square <coughs> because b was as <coughs> found to be pi by a. So, uh, this up to this part we have already done in the previous lecture. Let us now calculate a few more things from here. If we this of course, is a cosine distribution and hence we can expect it to vary along the length of the uh, length of this uh, slab reactor and hence to identify the maxima this is a quite straightforward procedure we have to get d phi dx and equate that to 0 and uh, then we get this particular form and finally, get x bar equal to 0 where x bar represents the location of this maxima. So, we can clearly see that the maxima in this neutron flux is located at the center line itself. Uh, and uh, hence the phi max can be by putting x equal to 0 in this particular equation cos 0 becomes equal to 1 and hence we get phi max equal to a naught or whatever expanded form that we have for a naught. And therefore, the distribution phi can be written as phi max into cos pi x by a because the entire coefficient is equal to the maximum value of this flask. But quite uh, this is the distribution that we can have it is a uh, mirror image with respect to the center line with a maxima at the center line and gradually decreasing to 0 at the edge. 
Now, this is the edge, but in this drawing it actually is non zero at the edge and it is expanded to become zero at somewhere here. So, this particular portion is the extrapolated length that I talked about earlier. Whenever uh, we have this extrapolated length to be significant, then this a needs to be corrected or this a needs to be replaced by a plus d, where d is the uh, th this extrapolated length or the thickness of the corresponding layer. Uh, also, along with the maxima quite often an average neutron flux uh, is an important information. As we can clearly see from this uh, picture that the flask is maximum at the center line and sharply reduces to become nearly 0 at the edge. So, now, an average flask can be defined as something like this which um, where the this phi average should be such a value that it is able to maintain the same power rating of the reactor. Now, the this particular one is the total amount of power produced during the reactor which we have already used earlier and this should be equal to E sigma f A into phi average that where E is the amount of energy released again sigma f is the macroscopic fission cross section and A is the uh, thickness of this slab reactor or half width of the slab reactor. And hence we finally, get this particular expression uh, this average phi value can be calculated as 1 by a into integral of uh, phi x dx over the re entire reactor that is minus a y 2 to plus a y 2 it comes out to be 2 by pi into phi max. So, quite often to understand the non-uniformity that can be present inside the reactor in terms of neutron flux we all define a peaking factor. This peaking factor is defined as a ratio of the maximum flux and the average flux and in this case it is clear. Uh, the maximum flask is uh, about 1.57 times greater than the average flask. So, that is a strong indicator of the asymmetry that can be present inside the reactor in such a configuration of infinite slab. Now, it, uh, but infinite slab reactor is only an idealization because the nothing can be infinite in terms of length and hence we can we need to go to uh, a more of a finite geometry. While there are quite a few finite geometries, but uh, we have selected the spherical reactor as uh, for our consideration. The governing equation remains the same that is uh, Lavoisier of phi plus b square phi is equal to 0 p being the uh, b being the parameter the buckling parameter for critical reactor we know that b g square and b m square has to be equal and which is given by b square. So, this is a spherical reactor and hence we have to use the spherical coordinate system which gives like this if we assume the entire phenomenon to be isotropic in nature then only variation that remains is in the radial direction. So, accordingly this is the equation that we are having and uh, after solving this again a very standard ODE. So, after solving this we, we have a 1 by r into sin b r plus a 2 by r into cos b r. Now, we have to find the value of these two coefficients a 1 and a 2 for which you need to know the boundary conditions. What can be the common boundary conditions? One boundary condition can be the value of this flask at the edge of the reactor that is at r equal to capital R and uh, other condition suppose if we put in this equation r equal to 0 means we are talking about the center line. Center line r equal to 0 uh, would lead to the uh, if we focus on this term this gives to a 0 by 0 kind of form in that situation which is uh, completely impracticable and uh, hence uh, only if only if realistic solution that we can get from this set of equation is when this a 2 goes to 0. A 2 has to goes to 0 otherwise the, inf uh, the neutral flux becomes infinite at the center line. So, we now are left with only a single coefficient which is a 1 which we have to find very shortly. Now, this is the other boundary condition that is at the edge of the cylinder or not cylinder edge of the spherical reactor this r equal to capital R we uh, have the condition of phi equal to 0. If we are having some kind of extrapolated length like uh, shown in the diagram this portion is the extrapolated length in the diagram this r equal to capital R condition that we have to impose on the same equation and uh, we can find that at phi equal to 0 
r phi phi equal to zero r equal to r we have a 1 by r into sin b r and hence a as a 1 and r both are non zero numbers so sin 0 has to come out uh, sin 0 we know that uh, that is equal to possible only when the it is equal to n pi so accordingly b r becomes so n pi where n is any integer and hence b n is equal to n pi upon r n can be any integer from 0, 1, 2, etcetera. Now, as we have used in the previous exercise also, here while there are theoretically several modes of operation, but uh, nothing beyond the 2 or 3 that works. So, b n equal to n pi by r, where n is equal to any integer starting from 0, going to 1, 2, etcetera. But as we have seen in the previous exercise also, here uh, while there are several possible modes, but all the modes uh, great for which n is greater than 1, they uh, subside quite quickly and leaving the final profile to resemble only the profile corresponding to n equal to 1. Of course, n equal to 0 is not possible because if we put n equal to 0 that will give phi equal to 0 and hence uh, your n equal to 1 is the most realistic solution that we can have yes. of this particular form a 1 by r into sin pi small r by capital R and uh, total power produced in order to get the value of a 1 we have to use the total power produced by the reactor which is again given by a form like this here e is the amount of energy produced by each fission reaction sigma f is the fission cross section phi is the neutron flux which we have just derived and uh, dv is the volume change this is the volume over which we are doing this entire integration or volume of the reactor basically we are doing this integration over the entire volume so it reduces to a form like this and Finally, we get the form of phi as something like this a sinusoidal profile, which is having its maximum at the center line and it is 0 at the edge, that is, when small r becomes equal to capital R, it is equal to 0. But uh, the following the same pattern, we can also calculate the maximum of this flask and its location and also the average value of this flask. And for any other geometry, also, you can keep on repeating the same exercise but that will be too much cumbersome to do, do and hence I have summarized these results uh, of quite a few other geometries in this particular table. Uh, for the infinite slab and for the finite cylinder we have already developed this is the infinite slab for which we have developed. For finite cylinder we have or uh, not finite cylinder actually for the spherical reactor we have just now touched upon. And uh, we can have all the geometries like a cylindrical reactor, we can have a rectangular parallel pipe type reactor. For each of them, we can repeat the same procedure by following the proper coordinate system. Like if you are dealing with the rectangular parallel pipe, then uh, variation is there in all three possible directions, and, and hence uh, we need to adopt a 3D method or three dimensional approach to identify the flux profile there. Same for an infinite cylinder or even a finite cylinder, if we know the values of uh, r and h, still we need to uh, put the assumption of an of axisymmetricity and then only we shall be able to analyze this finite cylinder following a two dimensional cylindrical coordinate method. But the most interesting factor here is the last column, which is the peaking power. Here we can clearly see all these values are much greater than 1. I am just going back to the previous slide. Um, here we can clearly see or in case of infinite slab also that was true. The neutron flask is very high at the center line and then diminishing very very sharply and approaching 0 close to the edge. That is because of a large difference between the maximum and average value of this uh, neutron flask. 1.57 was the value for infinite slave which we have derived already, but the same number for the finite sphere comes to be greater than 3 and for other several geometries as well. Now, this is not at all desirable because inside the reactor we would always like to have a flat profile of the neutron, so that the rate of reaction remains more or less the same in every part of the reactor. If the neutron flask is high only at the center line and very low or 0 at the wall, then the, fl uh, the fluid which is getting energy close to the center line will become superheated very very quickly whereas the fluid which is uh, uh, closer to the center uh, 
may not get uh, that much of energy or rather the power production there remains 0. So, the while the coolant goes out of the reactor channel there will be a large amount of axial variation in temperature and uh, that is uh, that can cause lots of several other issues. Hence, we must ensure that the neutron flux profile remains more or less a flat uh, quite uh, while uh, the infinite slab 1.57 is quite an encouraging number, but it is still a uh, concept only. So, we must ensure that the neutron flux remains uh, flat and uh, so that we can have uh, a uniform uh, distribution of uh, energy received by the coolant over the entire cross section. And one way of achieving that is by the use of reflectors. If you can remember earlier that the reflector we have mentioned in the, one of the earlier discussions that the reflectors are commonly used to reduce the neutron leakage from the reactor. Now, neutron uh, going out of the reactor is never desirable rather uh, because uh, that reduces the neutron density inside the reactor and thereby affects the power generation inside the reactor. But use of reflectors can reflect some uh, reflectors are materials which are having higher scattering cross section and so they can reflect or diffuse some medium back into the reactor and hence there it can uh, provide a reduction in the total uh, mass or the critical mass of the reactor. But it was mentioned earlier it can also provide a more uniform neutron distribution and here we can see how that can be done. So, uh, typical reflectors can have uh, both kinds of designs it can have axial reflectors or radial reflectors this is axial reflector where reflectors are used only at the inlet and outlet section of the channel whereas, this is radial reflector or reflector is there all around both of them have their own pros and cons, but generally the uh, radial one is found to be more convenient also much easier to design and therefore, uh, the radial reflector is more commonly used particularly in common pressurized water reactor or boiling water reactor uh, the reflector radial kind of reflector is preferred. It is uh, also very common to have the entire core of a boiling water reactor to get immersed into a pool of water because water is a uh, good reflector. Now, we assume a slab type reactor of width A and is surrounded on both sides by a non multiplying reactor slab of thickness B. Like the geometry of slab which we are taking earlier, this is the slab type reactor where thickness is A or you can say at each of the side it is A by 2, but this is the additional part. Now, we are having this reflector of uh, thickness B on both sides of the slab. So, we have to analyze uh, this thing and uh, while the analysis for a such a geometry we have already done uh, for infinite slab, but the reflector was not there. So, for the reactor core we can write the conservation equation to be like this just the same form the diffusion part, the absorption part and the generation part because of fission, but this equation is applicable for x equal to 0 to a by 2. Here the mod x is written because diffusion can be equal uh, in uh, both the positive and negative coordinate directions and so we are taking mod of x. Here the subscript c that has been used that refers to the core. So, phi c refers to the distribution of neutron flux inside the core Sim and uh, so this equation being standard we get this solution. One of the coefficient as was mentioned earlier in order to keep the neutron flux finite at the center line one uh, the sinusoidal term goes out we are having only the cost term that is remaining. Now, for the reflector that is from a by 2 to a by 2 plus b within that this is the corresponding conservation equation here phi r is the neutron flux inside the reflector there is uh, no multiplication or no fission going on. So, we do not have a third term, but we uh, definitely have the other two term that is the diffusion of neutron inside the reflector and also the absorption of neutron. Now, uh, if we solve this one we are going to get this particular form of solution for phi r again uh, boundary condition has been applied and one of the coefficient goes off leaving only one coefficient. So, this a 1 and a 2 are the two coefficients that we need to solve using the uh, power rating of the reactor and any such information. Now, what should we should use as the boundary condition to get these values of this 
the value uh, to get uh, a coupling between these two. Of course, uh, the reflector you have to un uh, understand that reflector if I uh, draw the diagram again this is the center line, this is the edge of the core and this is the reflector. Now, in the reflector there is no source of neutron because there is no fission going on. Then from where it can get the neutrons? That can that is only possible by diffusion from the core itself. And uh, as there is a diffusion going on, as there is a strong transfer of moment neutron or neutron is uh, going on uh, from the fuel to the reflector, uh, this particular interface is of very important, large importance. This is corresponding condition is called interface boundary condition. Interface boundary condition ensures that uh, flux phi does not have any kind of discontinuity or jump at the interface rather the value of flask uh, neutron flux distribution in the core and, and the same for the core distribution at uh, inside the reflector they should be equal at this particular interfacial surface if then they only we can avoid any kind of jump in the value of the neutron flask and we have a second boundary condition. The equality of flask alone is not sufficient rather we also have to consider the gradient of the flux or the neutron current density. That also should be uh, equal for both core and reflector at that interface. So, here J represents the neutron flux density or neutron current density and by using the fixed law of diffusion we arrive at this J being uh, D of uh, D phi D x. So, we get uh, this particular equation. So, accordingly we have two expressions where we are taking the equality of neutron flask between reactor and core and uh, this is another one where we have the gradient of velocity at rea uh, reactor and also at the reactor core and also at the reflector. If we combine these two boundary conditions then this is solution that we are going to get. Now, if one combining these two this is the final form of the equation that we are getting. I have skipped the intermediate steps just to save some time. Uh, here B G C refers to the buckling parameter for the core, D C and D R are the diffusion coefficients for the core and reflector respectively and L R refers to the diffusion length inside the reactor, inside the reflector rather. Uh, this uh, for this reactor to be critical this above equation must be satisfied. Now, this is actually a transcendental equation and so we cannot solve it directly rather it requires iterative solutions with some possible uh, starting guess. Um, this can be used to calculate uh, either this buckling parameter B or uh, any other parameter such as the dimension A that depends on what information is made available to you we can decide which one to calculate from here. Like, uh, if your objective is to identify the dimension of this reactor, then you definitely uh, try to solve this for A with a knowledge of this buckling parameter. Similarly, if the objective is to identify the buckling parameter, then we need to know the information about the A. This is the kind of profile that we are going to get. The first one that is this one is unreflected. There is uh, no reflector there and we can see the rapid decline in the um, neutral flux distribution. But once we put the reflector in look at what we are having. Now, this is the corresponding flux distribution and they are definitely much flatter and reaching 0 only at the edge of the moderator. So, use of reflector definitely helps in flattening out the neutron flux distribution and hence it can lead to a higher rate of fission reaction and uh, even also um, neutron flux distribution and uh, thereby allow a smooth distribution of temperature. Next, uh, if we do the same exercise it was done for an infinite slab reactor which is even a bit of idealization. If you do it for a cylindrical reactor and then we are going to get this kind of relation. Another transcendental equation here uh, R refers to the diameter of the cylinder or uh, rather radius of the cylinder and uh, for the special case when both the moderator or the reflector and the core are having identical values of the diffusion coefficient or um, basically when the same medium is used at the moderator and the in the reflector in the reactor then this uh, ratio of dc by dr by dc that goes to 1 and it reduces to a even simpler form. 
and now this doesn't seem to be a transcendental one anymore because not special for uh, is simplified we get this particular simplified form uh, bgc equal to cot of r bgc to 1 by lr this is not transcendental because uh, if the value of bgc is given this can be used to calculate the radius of the cylinder the magnitude of the coefficients i have already mentioned this two coefficients a1 and a2 can be calculated from the power rating of the reactor and finally we have the two group approach to talk about so far whatever analysis we have done there we have considered a single group of neutrons because we are dealing with one group diffusion equation or one group neutron diffusion equation but uh, during a nuclear reactor neutron goes through different levels of energy like uh, initially the neutrons when they appear because of fission they are fast in nature then they pass through the uh, moderator and becomes intermediate temperature level and uh, when at the intermediate temperature zone it can uh, get uh, eaten up or the resonance absorption that happens and so it is able to reach the thermal neutron level accordingly we can have a very wide spectrum of neutrons present in the reactor this is one of the representative diagrams here yeah, this purple color line represents thermal reactors or thermal uh, uh, the neutrons produced because of thermal fission the red one represents that for fast fission and you can clearly see there is a wide spectrum of energy for with which the neutron can appear so uh, it is uh, more logical instead of using a single group assumption it is more logical to lump the neutrons into several energy groups during the analysis um, there are several ways they are clumped sometimes people prefer three groups like the first neutron group the intermediate neutron group and also the thermal neutron group but here we shall be sticking ourselves to the two groups to show an example where are first neutron and thermal neutron so once that is in the level of uh, first neutrons that is kinetic energy is uh, of the order of 1 mev then we shall be uh, taking that into the first neutron group or we shall be considering that in the first neutron group and whenever the energy is less than that we shall be considering that in the thermal neutron group and the properties of each group are averaged over the constant range of energy like uh, these are the these are some numbers which are generally considered for the thermal group neutrons and uh, they also depends upon the moderator so the first one is the absorption cross section second one is just the reciprocal of that which is the mean absorption mean free path then we have the diffusion coefficient and finally the diffusion length l l is again d by sigma i so from there also it can be calculated or l square is d by sigma i so from there l can be calculated so these are the more for, most common four moderators and you can clearly see uh, the h2o is uh, having a quite small diffusion coefficient but uh, there are other mediums uh, according they are uh, like d2o d2 has a much larger diffusion coefficient quite close to graphite and its diffusion length is also much larger and these are corresponding numbers for fast neutron groups again uh, here the graphite or carbon is the one that is showing uh, very large values of this uh, diffusion length now we have to present a briefly uh, a very brief mathematical analysis so we are assuming that the neutrons appear in the first group as a result of thermal fission only that is when the thermal neutrons uh, participate in fission reaction the products of those are the one that comprises this or constitutes this first group but uh, the only source of thermal neutron is when this first neutrons uh, passes through the resonance absorption zone and uh, because of the scattering it becomes thermalized so for a critical reactor we can write two different equations two different balance equation this is for the first group of reactor which you can think about uh, the first reactor group here we have the first term is the diffusion of first reactors then absorption of first reactor because of it the number of neutrons will decrease and third is the production of first reactors of course uh, k infinity gives you the total uh, multiplication factor the infinite multiplication factor and once we are dividing that with the resonance scale probability this is the uh, and the rate that we are going to get similarly for the second group this is the equation where along with the leakage and absorption term we have this uh, it represents the amount of neutrons 
that is uh, the source of neutrons which is the neutrons which are passing through the resonance absorption zone and hence p is the resonance escape probability. So, sigma a 1 multiplied by this p is the amount of neutrons that are able to thermalize and hence be part of this thermal neutron group. Now, both kind of fluxes generally show the same kind of uh, spatial dependence and hence they are, uh, have an identical geometrical buckling. Accordingly, the first equation takes this particular form. Here we have only represents that Laplacian of phi as the buckling into phi or minus of that rather or you can also write this as this plus this is equal to 0 an equation which we have repeatedly used. So, with that substitutions we get a form like this and uh, we can uh, do a similar procedure for the second one this is the corresponding equation. So, we are having basically two algebraic equations which are coupled with each other and the solution of non zero or non trivial solution for this is possible only when that this particular determinant of the coefficients is equal to 0. So, from there we get this as the final solution. This equation has to be satisfied for a reactor to be critical, a reactor with reflector to be critical. Here the denominator can also be viewed in this way like 1 by L 1 square B G square can be thought about the, leak, the non first neutron non leakage probability whereas, the second term of the reciprocal of 1 plus L square L 2 square B G square can be viewed as the uh, thermal neutron non leakage probability. So, instead of P 1 we can also write this as P f and we can also write this as P T h. These are the two uh, non leakage probabilities because uh, that includes the diffusion length as well, uh, diffusion length for the zone 1 and diffusion length for zone 2. So, this way we can analyze uh, these uh, two different groups of neutrons there can be situations where you have to deal with more than two number of uh, groups and uh, just uh, by putting this equations writing corresponding equations for each of them and applying suitable boundary conditions and so also coupling situations we, you can always uh, solve this kind of systems. So, that takes us towards the end of this fourth module where uh, we have discussed in detail about the chain reaction and we have understood that it is absolutely essential for sustained power generation in nuclear reactors. Then a critical reactor is characterized by a multiplication factor value of 1 and reactivity of 0. The diffusion of neutron in a medium is roughly governed by the fixed law using the fixed law and also neutron balance we have written the single group neutron diffusion equation which includes the diffusion term the uh, neutron production because of fission or external source term and uh, we can also have the absorption term. Then uh, following from there onwards we have identified that the critical reactor must ensure identical magnitudes of both geometrical and material buckling parameters because that is the mandatory condition or we can also write mathematically B g square is equal to B m square. The distance travelled by the neutron uh, inside a reactor can be related to the diffusion length. There we have also uh, distinguished or differentiated between the diffusion length and the mean free path. Mean free path is the total distance travelled by a neutron between two successive interactions, whereas the diffusion length is the straight line distance from the point of its birth till the point where it gets absorbed. Uh, then we have done the mathematical analysis of the Bayer reactor and we have seen that a Bayer reactor shows large deviation in the value of the neutron flux distribution with the maximum at the center line and the near 0 at the edges or in some cases if the extrapolated length is considered is 0 at the extrapolated length. And then we have analyzed with the reflectors and you just find that use of uh, reflectors can lead to more significant flux distribution and hence a offers a lower critical mux. So, this is the fourth module uh, where we have discussed about chain reaction and now you have much clearer idea about the possible neutron flux distribution that we may encounter in a particular in particular reactor and once we know or once we have the complete information is about this flux distribution how to utilize this in calculating the power rating of the reactor. So, 
this is the end of uh, okay actually i forgot about mentioning the last one which is the two group approach which pro was found to pro uh, provide a more realistic estimate and uh, but added computational or mathematical complexities of course so we now know how to calculate the total energy that can be produced from a reactor and in the next module we shall be discussing about how we can harness that energy and transfer that to the coolant because we shall be talking about the nuclear thermal hydraulics. So, just wait for that and for the moment thank you and uh, bye.